Carlos Gosson, Arabic, Lebanese Arabic pronunciation, born 9 March 1954, is a Lebanese, Brazilian-born businessman. Gosson also holds French and Lebanese nationality. As of January 2020, he is an internationally wanted fugitive. Gosson was the CEO of Michelin North America, chairman and CEO of Renault, chairman of Avtovaz, chairman and CEO of Nissan, and chairman of Mitsubishi Motors. Gosson was also the chairman and CEO of the Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi Alliance, a strategic partnership among those automotive manufacturers through a complex cross-shareholding agreement. The venture has held approximately 10% of the total market share since 2010, and as of 2017, was understood to be the largest automobile group worldwide. In 1996, Renault's CEO Louis Schweitzer hired Gosson as his deputy and charged him with the task of turning the company around from near bankruptcy. Gosson elaborated a plan to cut costs for the period 1998 to 2000, reducing the workforce, revising production processes, standardizing vehicle parts and pushing the launch of new models. The company also undertook major organizational changes, introducing a lean production system with delegate responsibilities inspired by Japanese systems, reforming work methods and centralizing research and development at its Techno Center to reduce vehicle conception costs while accelerating such conception. Gosson became known as Lacoste Killer. In the early 2000s, for orchestrating one of the auto industry's most aggressive downsizing campaigns and spearheading the turnaround of Nissan, from its near bankruptcy in 1999, he earned the nickname Mr. Fixit. Following the Nissan financial turnaround, in 2002 Fortune awarded him Asia Businessman of the Year. In 2003 Fortune identified him as one of the 10 most powerful people in business outside the US, and its Asian edition voted him Man of the Year. Surveys jointly published by the Financial Times and PricewaterhouseCoopers named him the fourth most respected business leader in 2003, and the third most respected business leader in 2004 and in 2005. He quickly achieved celebrity status in Japan and in the business world, and his life has been chronicled in Japanese comics. Gosson stepped down as CEO of Nissan on 1 April 2017, while remaining chairman of the company. He was arrested at Tokyo International Airport on 19 November 2018, on allegations of underreporting his salary, and gross misuse of company assets. On the 22nd of November 2018, Nissan's board made a unanimous decision to dismiss Gosson, as Nissan's chairman, effective immediately. Mitsubishi Motors executive board took similar action on the 26th of November 2018. Renault and the French government continued to support him at first, presuming him innocent until proven guilty. However, they ultimately found the situation untenable and Gosson was made to retire as chairman and CEO of Renault on 24 January 2019. While out on bail granted in early March, Gosson was re-arrested in Tokyo on 4 April 2019, over new charges of misappropriations of Nissan funds. On 8 April 2019, Nissan shareholders voted to oust Gosson from the company's board. He was released again on bail on 25 April. In June, Renault uncovered €11 million Euros in questionable expenses by him, leading to a French investigation and raids. With help from an American private security contractor, Gosson fled from Japan to Lebanon on 30 December, via private jet, breaking his bail conditions. On 2 January 2020, Interpol issued a red notice to Lebanon seeking Gosson's arrest. Chapter 1 – Early Life and Education Gosson's grandfather was Bikara Gosson, a Maronite Catholic who emigrated from Isle Toon, French Mandate Lebanon to Brazil at the age of 13, eventually settling in remote Guapor, Rondonia, near the border between Brazil and Bolivia. Bikara Gosson was an entrepreneur and eventually headed several companies, in businesses including the rubber trade, the sale and purchase of agricultural products, and aviation. His son Jorge Gosson married Rose Jazza, a Nigerian-born Lebanese woman, whose family came from Mysiara in Lebanon then went to Brazil, 
where they settled in Porto Velho, the state capital of Rondonia, and had four children. Carlos' father, Jorge Gosson, was a diamond trader and worked in the airline industry. Jorge was convicted of murdering a priest in Sofar, Lebanon in 1960. Jorge fled to Brazil in 1975 at the outbreak of Lebanese Civil War. Carlos Gosson was born on 9 March 1954, in Porto Velho. When he was about two years old he became sick after drinking unsanitary water, and his mother moved with him to Rio de Janeiro. He did not fully recover there, and in 1960, when Gosson was six years old, he and his mother and sister moved to Beirut, Lebanon, where his grandmother and two other sisters lived. Gosson completed his secondary school studies in Lebanon, at the Jesuit school college Notre Dame de Dieu. He then completed his classes preparatoires in Paris, at the College Stanislas and the Lycée Saint Louis. He graduated as an engineer from the École Polytechnique in 1974 and the École des Mines de Paris in 1978. Chapter 2 Career Chapter 2 Section 1 Michelin After graduation in 1978, Gosson spent 18 years at Michelin, Europe's largest tire maker, initially training and working in several plants in France and Germany. In 1981, he became plant manager in Le puy en ville France. In 1984 he was named head of research and development for the company's industrial tire division. In 1985, when Gosson was 30 years old, he was appointed chief operating officer of Michelin's South American operations. He returned to Rio de Janeiro, reporting directly to François Michelin, who tasked Gosson with turning around the operation which was unprofitable and struggling under Brazil's hyperinflation. Gosson formed cross-functional management teams to determine best practices among the French, Brazilian, and other nationalities working in the South American division. The multicultural experience in Brazil formed the basis of his cross-cultural management style and emphasis on diversity as a core business asset. You learn from diversity, but you're comforted by commonality, Gosson has said. The division returned to profitability in two years. After turning around Michelin's South American operations, Gosson was appointed president and CEO of Michelin North America in 1989, and moved to Greenville, South Carolina, with his family. He was promoted to CEO of Michelin North America in 1990. He presided over the restructuring of the company after its acquisition of the Uniroyal Goodrich Tire Company. Chapter 2 Section 2 Post-privatization Renault. In 1996, Gosson became executive vice president in charge of purchasing, advanced research, engineering and development, powertrain operations, and manufacturing at Renault, and he was also in charge of Renault's South American division, located in the Mercosur. Gosson's radical restructuring of Renault successfully contributed to profitability of the company over 1997. His reputation of successful performance under François Michelin was repeated under the first CEO of the freshly privatized Renault. Chapter 2 Section 3, Nissan and the Renault-Nissan Alliance In March 1999, Renault and Nissan formed the Renault-Nissan Alliance, and in May 1999 Renault purchased a 36.8% stake in Nissan. While maintaining his roles at Renault, Gosson joined Nissan as its chief operating officer in June 1999, became its president in June 2000, and was named chief executive officer in June 2001. When he joined the company, Nissan had a consolidated interest-bearing net automotive debt of more than $20 billion, and only three of its 46 models, sold in Japan were generating a profit. Reversing the company's sinking fortunes was considered nearly impossible. Gosson's Nissan revival plan, announced in October 1999, called for a return to profitability in fiscal year 2000, a profit margin in excess of 4.5% of sales by the end of fiscal year 2002, and a 50% reduction in the current level of debt by the end of fiscal year 2002. Gosson promised to resign if these goals were not met. Gosson's Nissan revival plan called for cutting 21,000 Nissan jobs, mostly in Japan, shutting five Japanese plants, 
reducing the number of suppliers and shareholdings, and auctioning off prized assets such as Nissan's aerospace unit. Gosson was the fourth non Japanese person to lead a Japanese automaker, after Mark Fields, Henry Wallace, and James Miller were appointed by Ford to run Mazda in the late 1990s. In addition to cutting jobs, plants, and suppliers, Gosson spearheaded major and dramatic structural and corporate culture changes at Nissan. He defied Japanese business etiquette in various ways, including by eliminating seniority-based and age-based promotion, by changing lifetime employment from a guarantee to a desired goal for when the company achieved high performance, and by dismantling Nissan's Kietsu system, an interwoven web of parts suppliers with cross-holdings in Nissan. When the Nissan Revival Plan was announced, the proposed dismantling of Kietsu earned Gosson the nickname Kietsu Killer, and the Wall Street Journal quoted a Dresna Kleinwart Benson analyst in Tokyo as saying Gosson might become a target of public outrage if Nissan threw former affiliates out of its supply chain. Gosson changed Nissan's official company language from Japanese to English, and included executives from Europe and North America in key global strategy sessions for the first time. In the first year of the Nissan Revival Plan, Nissan's consolidated net profit after tax climbed to $2.7 billion for fiscal year 2000, from a consolidated net loss of $6.46 billion in the previous year. Twelve months into his three-year turnaround plan, Nissan had returned to profitability, and within three years it was one of the industry's most profitable automakers, with operating margins consistently above 9%, more than twice the industry average. The goals of the Nissan Revival Plan were all reached before 31 March 2002. In May 2002, Gosson announced his next set of goals for the company, Nissan 180, a three year plan for growth based on the numbers 1, 8, and 0. By the end of September 2005, Nissan planned to increase its global sales by 1 million vehicles, and by the spring of 2005, it was committed to achieving an operating margin of at least 8%, and reducing its net automotive debt to zero. These goals were all reached, in the spring of 2003, Nissan announced that its net automotive debt was eliminated in fiscal year 2002. Nissan's operating profit margin climbed to 11.1% in fiscal year 2003, it had been 1.4% in fiscal year 1999. In October 2005, Nissan announced that its annual sales from 30 September 2004, to 30 September 2005, were more than 3.67 million, up from the 2.6 million vehicles sold in the fiscal year ended March 2002. In May 2005, Gosson was named President and Chief Executive Officer of Renault. When he assumed the CEO roles at both Renault and Nissan, Gosson became the world's first person to run two companies on the Fortune Global 500 simultaneously. In 2005, billionaire investor Kirk Kerkorian acquired a 9.9% stake in General Motors and seated one of his representatives on the company's board, then urged GM to investigate a merger with Renault and Nissan with Gosson as the new chairman of GM. In 2006, GM's embattled management rebuffed the takeover attempt, and by the end of the year, Kerkorian's Tricinda Corporation sold most of its GM stock. In 2006, Ford Motor Company made Gosson a formal offer to lead the company. Gosson refused, reportedly saying the only way he would come to the struggling company was if he was named both the CEO and chairman of the board. Bill Ford Jr. refused to give up his chairmanship. In 2007, Gosson led the Renault-Nissan alliance into the mass-market zero-emission electric car market in a major way, and committed €4 billion Euros to the effort. In 2008, he confirmed that Nissan-Renault would bring an entire lineup of zero-emission electric cars to the worldwide market by 2012. In 2009, he told the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School of Business, if you're going to let developing countries have as many cars as they want, and they're going to have as many cars as they want one way or another, there is absolutely no alternative but to go for zero emissions. And the only zero emissions vehicle available today is electric, so we decided to go for it. The Nissan LEAF, 
an electric car billed as the world's first affordable zero-emission car, debuted in December 2010. As of 2017, the Renault-Nissan Alliance is the world's electric vehicle leader, selling more than twice as many electric cars as Tesla, and the Nissan Leaf is the world's best-selling electric vehicle by a wide margin. Goson was a visible leader in recovery efforts after the Japanese earthquake and tsunami on the 11th of March 2011, one of the worst natural disasters in modern history. On the 29th of March 2011, he made the first of several visits to the hard-hit Iwaki engine plant in Fukushima Prefecture, 50 kilometers from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant and at his direction Nissan restored full operations at the Iwaki factory well ahead of expectations. He appeared on television in Japan to encourage optimism. In May 2011, Gosson remained committed to building at least one million of Nissan's cars and trucks in Japan annually. In 2011 Gosson was under scrutiny by the French government for mishandling a spying scandal related to Renault. In June 2012, Gosson was named deputy chairman of the board of directors of Russian automobile manufacturer of Tovaz. In June 2013, he was appointed chairman of the Russian company, a position he retained through June 2016. Renault had begun a strategic partnership with Avtovaz in 2008 by acquiring a 25% stake in the company, this led to increasingly deeper partnerships between Renault-Nissan and Avtovaz, ending in Renault-Nissan alliance control of the Russian automaker in 2014. In February 2017, Gosson announced he would step down as CEO of Nissan on 1 April 2017, while remaining chairman of the company. Hiroto Seikawa succeeded Gosson and Nissan. In November 2018, Renault owned 43.4% of Nissan, while Nissan owned non-voting shares equal to 15% of Renault's equity. Chapter 2 Section 4, Mitsubishi In October 2016, Nissan completed the acquisition of a controlling 34% stake in Mitsubishi Motors. Gosson became, in addition to his Renault-Nissan posts, chairman of Mitsubishi, with an aim to rehabilitate the automaker after a months-long scandal involving fuel economy misrepresentation and consequent falling revenues. The Nissan-Mitsubishi partnership includes partnership in developing electric automobiles for Mitsubishi, and the Renault-Nissan-Mitsubishi alliance creates the world's fourth-largest auto group, after Toyota, Volkswagen AG and General Motors Company. Mitsubishi Motors board removed Gosson from his role as chairman on 26 November 2018, following his arrest and ousting from Nissan for alleged financial misconduct. Chapter 2 Section 5, Advisorships Gosson served on the International Advisory Board of Brazilian bank Banco Itaú until 2015. He is also a member of the advisory board of Tsinghua University School of Economics and Management in Beijing. He has received an honorary doctorate from American University of Beirut, and he is a member of the Strategic Council, St. Joseph University of Beirut. In 2014 and 2015, he was elected president of the European Automobile Manufacturers Association. He serves as governor of the World Economic Forum. Chapter 3, Arrest in Tokyo and Subsequent Nissan Investigation Chapter 3 Section 1, Initial Arrest On 19 November 2018, Tokyo District Prosecutors arrested Gosson at 4.30 p.m. upon his re-entry into Japan aboard a private jet that had come from Lebanon, for questioning over allegations of false accounting. Gosson's top aide Greg Kelly, a Nissan director and former head of human resources, was also arrested upon his arrival from the U.S. that day. On the same day, Nissan chief executive Hiroto Seikawa announced at a press conference that Gosson had been dismissed from Nissan's board and would be stripped of executive rights at a meeting to be held on the 22nd of November. Seikawa stressed that the dismissal was the result of an internal inquiry by Nissan and alleged that Gosson and Kelly had underreported their compensation and used company assets for personal use. While the allegations remained unproven in court, with due legal process pending, at the same news conference, Seikawa expressed disappointment, indignation, and despair at Gosson's conduct, 
which included using company funds for personal investments and misusing corporate assets and also said, this is an act that cannot be tolerated by the company. It is sufficient grounds for his dismissal. Although the company did not provide details, reports in the Japanese media stated that Nissan was paying all or some of the costs at some amount of 18 million US dollars for residences used by Gosson in Rio de Janeiro, Beirut, Paris, and Amsterdam, and that Gosson charged family vacation expenses to the company. The purchases of some of these residences and the payment of expenses were handled by a shell company named ZA Capital BV based in the Netherlands, which Kelly had instructed Nissan's board to set up to make venture investments at the end of 2010. Nissan funds were used to purchase Gosson's Paris apartment in 2005, and ZA funds were used to purchase his $5 million beachfront Rio apartment in 2012 and his Beirut mansion, which, with renovations, cost over $15 million. Nissan compliance auditors began trying to track ZA activity in 2014 but were stymied at first by the chain of shell companies used in ZA investments. In addition, to avoid reporting the full amount of his compensation in Nissan financials, as required by Japanese law beginning in 2010, Gosson had Kelly structure complicated deferred payment plans which went unreported under an aggressive interpretation of the disclosure rules which Nissan's outside auditors had not signed off on, and which totaled around $80 million at the time of his arrest eight years later. According to Nikkei reports, Gosson told investigators that he instructed Kelly to handle the compensation reporting in a legal manner, and Kelly told investigators that he acted on advice from outside law firms and the financial services agency in handling the reporting. Leaks to the media said that Gosson had planned to call a vote to fire Nissan CEO Seikawa and reinstate Kelly to active service at the scheduled board meeting. Gosson was detained at the Tokyo Detention House, under Japanese rules that allow suspects to be detained for up to 23 days without criminal charges being filed. Gosson and Kelly were reportedly arrested on information provided by an unidentified non-Japanese executive in Nissan's legal department, in the second deal ever struck under Japan's recently introduced plea bargaining system. Charges were filed against Gosson and Kelly on the unreporting of deferred compensation on 10 December, along with allegations of additional charges that restarted a 10-day holding period without bail. Nissan also took control of the Rio and Beirut properties and changed the locks, which has led Gosson's family to sue for access. Chapter 3 Section 2 – Continued Detention and New Charges On 21 December 2018, Gosson was re-arrested on suspicion of shifting to Nissan personal losses of US$16.6 million US dollars related to a personal swap contract in October 2008. The introduction of those charges prevented Gosson's release on bail later the same day, because the new charges permitted an additional 10 to 20 days of incarceration prior to a bail hearing. Subsequent reporting linked this charge to Gosson's dealings with Sheikh Khalid El Jufali, the vice chairman of one of Saudi Arabia's largest conglomerates and majority owner of the company which owns half of a regional joint venture called Nissan Gulf, with the other half held by a wholly owned Nissan subsidiary. In return for a personal letter of credit from Jufali to Gosson during the 2008 crisis, which served as bank demanded collateral for Gosson's swap contract, Nissan indirectly paid $14.7 million from an internal discretionary fund known as the CEO Reserve to a wholly owned Jufali company in four installments between 2009 and 2012, although the internal documentation did not specify the ultimate recipient. According to Tokyo prosecutors, Kelly was not involved in this transaction and so was released on bail on 25 December. Gosson made his first public appearance after his arrest at an arraignment on Tuesday 8 January 2019, where he asserted his innocence, making a statement in response to the main allegations against him, however, his bid to be released from prison on these charges was rejected. Gosson's imprisonment was set to end on of January 2019. That day, Gosson was indicted on two additional charges, aggravated breach of trust and understating his income, once again extending his imprisonment. As a result, he could remain in jail for months more before a trial would take place. Two days later, Nissan's investigation allegedly found that, 
In addition to the underreporting of salary already charged, Gosson had paid himself an undisclosed $8 million in 2018 from a Netherlands-based joint venture owned by Nissan and Mitsubishi that was set up in 2017. Without the knowledge of either company's directors because Gosson had the sole authority to dispense cash from the venture. Gosson again appealed the denial of bail from 8 January 2019 and offered to meet greater restrictions and higher guarantees of appearance in return for his release, including wearing an ankle bracelet and posting his Nissan stock as collateral. Additionally, on 14 January 2019 Gosson's wife Carol published a letter that she wrote to Human Rights Watch protesting against his treatment in detainment. Nevertheless, on 21 January 2019, the Tokyo District Court again denied bail. The Japanese term Hitoji Chishiho has been brought up in some media reports. Takashi Takano, one of Gosson's lawyers, stated that the Japanese judicial system is a country risk. Chapter 3 Section 3 Further Developments On the 11th of January 2019 Jose Munoz, Nissan's chief performance officer and head of its China operations, resigned from the company, effective immediately. Munoz, considered to be a close ally to Gosson and a possible successor as CEO of Renault and Nissan, had been a person of interest in Nissan's internal investigation, with which he was reported to be uncooperative. One of Nissan's three independent directors opined that Nissan may simply eliminate the position of chairman, and not replace Gosson, a route previously taken by other scandal-plagued Japanese companies. The Reuters Japan News Service reported that Nissan may file suit against Gosson personally. At first the French government and Renault had been reported to be standing behind Gosson during his imprisonment, on the presumption that Gosson is innocent and until proven guilty. However, France's financial minister Bruno Le Maire stated on 16 January that Renault may seek a new CEO to replace Gosson due to his continued incarceration. Renault possibly worried about Nissan taking the chance to use the power vacuum at Renault to reshape the alliance's balance of power. After the French government called for leadership change and his bail requests were rejected by the Japanese courts, Gosson finally agreed to step down. He resigned as chairman and CEO of Renault on the 24th of January 2019. On the 30th of January 2019, Gosson said the charges were plot and treason by executives at Nissan, who opposed the relationship with Renault and a future plan that was in the works to integrate Nissan, Mitsubishi, and Renault. In mid-February 2019, Gosson's lead counsel Motonari Otsuru stepped down and was replaced by Jinichiro Hironaka who has a record of success in a number of high-profile cases. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 2 Bail In early March 2019, Gosson was granted a request for bail in a Tokyo court. This was his third bail request, and the first by his new legal team under Hironaka. The court set bail at 1 billion yen subject to stringent conditions. He was not allowed to travel abroad, and had to remain at a given address under 24-hour camera surveillance, with no internet access. He was released on 6 March 2019. On 3 April 2019, Gosson tweeted that he was ready to tell the truth and that he would hold a conference on the 11th of April 2019. He was re-arrested for the fourth time early on 4 April 2019 over new suspicions of financial misconduct concerning alleged dealings via Oman. Gosson released a statement claiming the arrest was outrageous and arbitrary. Until that point in time he had been held for 108 days since he was first arrested in November 2018. On 8 April 2019, during an extraordinary shareholders meeting, Nissan shareholders voted to remove Carlos Gosson from the company board. Shareholders also voted to remove Gosson's former right-hand man Greg Kelly, and to appoint Renault chairman Jean-Dominique Snard as a director. The next day, Gosson posted a YouTube video, where he publicly stated that he was innocent of all the accusations that came around these charges that are all biased, taken out of context, twisted in a way to paint a personage of greed, and a personage of dictatorship. He also claimed that the payments to Jufali were meant to help Nissan fix a dispute with a local distributor, and to open a bank contract to convert his salary from yen to US dollars, 
in order to avoid currency swings. The Japanese court rejected an appeal filed by Gosson's lawyers, and approved an initial 10 days detention for Gosson, until the 22nd of April 2019. He was released in late April, but confined to strict house arrest, including having no contact with his wife for four months. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 3 Investigations in Other Countries In June 2019 Renault published that in an internal audit they had uncovered 11 million euros in questionable expenses by Gosson, which was followed by the French state opening its own investigation into his actions. Prosecutors in the district of Nanterre west of Paris stated that anti-fraud police had searched his residence in the town of La Tong la ville for evidence. In July Renault's headquarters in boulogne billancourt were searched by 20 police personnel in relation to this case. July also saw Carlos Gosson take action against French mass media for libel. In August, 2019 his wife Carol appealed to President Emmanuel Macron of France to intercede on behalf of her husband with Japanese leader Shinzo Abe at the 45th G7 summit held from 24 to 26 August at the French town of Biarritz. In September 2019, in one of the first legal accords of the saga, Gosson settled with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission over claims of failing to disclose more than $140 million in pay to him from Nissan. He was fined $1 million while Nissan was fined $15 million and Greg Kelly $100,000. Although he neither admitted nor denied the SEC's charges, he accepted a 10-year ban from serving as an officer or director of a public company. Kelly accepted a 5-year ban under similar terms. According to the New York Times, the settlement all but ended Gosson's career as a global business executive. Chapter 3 Section 4, Flight from Japan On 30 December 2019, numerous media outlets reported that Gosson had escaped from Japan and arrived in Beirut, Lebanon. Gosson later confirmed these reports through a statement released by his press representative in New York. In his statement, Gosson claimed that he would no longer be held hostage by a rigged Japanese justice system where guilt is presumed, discrimination is rampant and basic human rights are denied. Gosson left his Tokyo apartment at around 14.30 on 29 December 2019 and joined two men at a nearby hotel. The three then took a bullet train from Shinagawa to Osaka, and arrived at a hotel near Kansai International Airport, just after 20 hundred hours. The team hired to extract him from Tokyo had noticed that Japanese security did not follow Gosson into hotels, which facilitated his escape. A few hours later, two men left the hotel carrying large containers, including an audio equipment box where Gosson was hidden. The men then boarded a Bombardier Global Express private jet with Turkish registration TCTSR. The large box carrying Gosson was never x-rayed or checked by customs officials, because it was too big to fit inside the x-ray machine, the plane left Kansai Airport at 23.10, landing at Istanbul Atatürk Airport at 5.26 on the morning of December 30, 2019. Within an hour of the plane's landing, a separate private jet left for Beirut. An employee at Turkish private jet operator MNG Jet admitted to falsifying passenger records, in which two separate planes were leased, one from Dubai to Osaka and then Osaka to Istanbul, while the other from Istanbul to Beirut. On 8 May, Turkey charged seven people accused of helping Gosson flee to Lebanon via Istanbul. Arrest warrants issued by Japanese prosecutors on 30 January 2020 claimed that the escape operation was orchestrated by former United States Army Special Forces soldier Michael Taylor, a private security contractor with extensive contacts in Lebanon. The warrants also claimed that Michael was assisted by his son Peter Maxwell Taylor and a third American, George Antoine Zayek. Michael Taylor had conducted similar international rescue operations in the past and has also served time in prison in the United States. On 20 May, United States authorities arrested Michael and Peter Taylor on suspicion of helping Gosson escape. On 30 October 2020, the U.S. agreed to extradite the Taylors to Japan. Chapter 3 Section 5, Residence in Lebanon Following Gosson's arrival in Lebanon, 
a Tokyo court granted a request by Japanese prosecutors to revoke his bail. While Japan and Lebanon are both members of Interpol, and have had diplomatic relations since 1954, there is no extradition agreement between the two countries. Interpol has issued a red notice for his arrest. Japanese authorities raided Gosson's Tokyo apartment on 2 January looking for evidence. Separately, some Lebanese lawyers want Gosson prosecuted over his 2008 trip to Israel as the chairman of Renault Nissan to meet Better Place founder Shai Agassi, which they claim violated the Arab League boycott of Israel. Gosson later addressed reports that his family, including his wife Carol, may have played a role in his departure from Japan, stating that such speculation is inaccurate and false. On 7 January, Prosecutors in Japan issued an arrest warrant for Carol Gosson on suspicion of giving false testimony during a court hearing in April 2019. Carlos Gosson held his first press conference since leaving Japan on 8 January 2020, in which he described his imprisonment conditions, pleaded innocence and named Nissan executives who plotted his demise. He claimed that when he left Japan, I fled injustice and political persecution. The next day, Judge Ghassan Wiedert, a Lebanese prosecutor, imposed a travel ban on Gosson. After his escape from Japan, Carlos Gosson's Japanese lawyer and seven other members of his defense resigned. His lawyer, Junichiro Hiranaka, said his escape was a complete surprise. On 10 February 2020, Gosson hired former Disney president Michael Ovitz, co-founder of the Creative Artists Agency, as his Hollywood agent. On 12 February 2020, Nissan launched a $90 million lawsuit against Gosson for alleged corrupt actions, and on 29 February 2020, Japan's financial regulators fined Nissan 2.42 billion yen, for underreporting remuneration of former chairman Gosson, and other executives for years. On 8 July 2020, the Nikkei reported that $862,500 was paid from a Paris bank account related to Gosson to promote Fox, a company managed by Peter Taylor, an ex-Green Beret who helped him flee to Lebanon. Gosson's house in Lebanon sustained damage following the August 2020 Beirut explosion, which occurred five kilometers away from the residence. On 3 November 2020, Lebanon's Prosecutor General decided not to charge Gosson for visiting Israel in 2008 because the statute of limitations had expired. In November 2020, the United Nations Human Rights Group said that the Japanese government should give Gosson compensation and other reparations due to the arrest and detention conditions in November 2018. In December 2020, it was reported that French investigators would meet with Gosson in January 2021 as part of a separate investigation of expenses covered by a Dutch subsidiary of Renault and Nissan. Gosson is under two investigations in France, one that is focused on suspicious transactions between Renault and a distributor in Oman, as well as another investigation into alleged illegal payments for private trips and events paid by Renault-Nissan's Netherlands-based holding company, RNBV. In a January 2021 interview, Gosson questioned why France was questioning him over the charges, while Japan did not, and denied the charges. Chapter 4 – Personal Life Gosson's first marriage was to Rita Corday, who came originally from Rayfan, Lebanon, and whom he met in France in 1984. Together they had four children, Caroline, Nadine, Maya, and Anthony. They divorced in 2012. In May 2016, Gosson married Lebanese-American Carol Nahazand, a few months later in October, through a large-scale Marie Antoinette-themed party at the Grand Trianon of the Palace of Versailles, in the outskirts of Paris, to celebrate both the wedding and Carol's 50th birthday. He is reported by several Japanese media to have six private residences, in Tokyo, Paris, Rio de Janeiro, Amsterdam, Beirut, and New York. Gosson, whom Forbes magazine called the hardest working man in the brutally competitive global car business, as of 2006 was splitting his time between Paris and Tokyo and logging roughly 150,000 miles in airplanes per year. Japanese media called him 7 Eleven. He holds Brazilian, French, and Lebanese citizenships. He has been noted for his direct, 
results and execution-oriented style in business strategy meetings, and for his interest in resolving problems from within a company by listening to workers and by cross-functional and cross-cultural team groupings. Gosson is multilingual, speaking four languages fluently, French, Portuguese, English, and Arabic, and he has also studied Japanese. He is a partner in Exia, a winery in the northern coastal town of Batroun, Lebanon. In 2012 he was named to the honorary board of the American Foundation of St. George Hospital in Beirut. Gosson was hailed as a potential presidential candidate in Lebanon. In a June 2011 survey by life insurance company AXA, Gosson was ranked number 7 in a random poll asking Japanese people, which celebrity do you want to run Japan? He has so far declined such overtures, saying he has no political ambitions. Gosson's lawyers have stated he has chronic kidney disease which they claim was worsened by his lack of access to proper treatment while imprisoned. Chapter 4 Section 1, In the Media Beginning in November 2001, Gosson's life story was turned into a superhero comic book series in Japan, titled The True Story of Carlos Gosson, in the manga comic book Big Comic Superior. The series was published as a book in 2002. His face has been reproduced both in Lebanese postage stamps and in bento boxes in Japanese restaurants. Gosson is the subject of a number of books in English, Japanese, and French. In English, he wrote a best selling business book called Shift, Inside Nissan's Historic Revival. He was the subject of another business book called Turnaround. How Carlos Gosson Rescued Nissan by David McGee. He also provided strategic business commentary and on the job lessons to aspiring managers in a book called The Gosson Factor 24 Inspiring Lessons from Carlos Gosson, the most successful transnational CEO by Miguel Rivas McCode. Chapter 5 Awards and Recognition. As a result of his achievements, Gosson has had numerous awards and honors bestowed upon him. Some of these include. In 2001, he topped Time magazine's list of global influentials, beating Bill Gates and several other globally renowned businessmen. In 2001, he was named Father of the Year by a Japanese community group. In 2002, he was appointed a Chevalier of the Legion of Honor by the French government. In 2002 Fortune awarded him Asia Businessman of the Year. In 2003, he was named Man of the Year by Fortune magazine's Asian edition. In 2003 Fortune listed him as one of the 10 most powerful business leaders outside the US. In 2004, he became the first foreign business leader to receive the prestigious Blue Ribbon Medal from Emperor Akihito of Japan. In 2004, he was added to the Automotive Hall of Fame. In 2004, he was also added to the Japan Automotive Hall of Fame. In 2006, Gosson was made an honorary Knight Commander of the Order of the British Empire. In 2010, CEO Quarterly magazine listed Gosson as one of the most respected CEOs. In 2011, CNBC listed Gosson as Asia Business Leader of the Year. In 2012, Gosson was awarded the Grand Cordon of the Order of Wissam Alawite, an honorific designation to civilians in recognition of services that benefit Morocco. In 2012, Gosson received the Japan Society Award. In 2012, Gosson became the first person in the auto industry, and the fourth overall, to win a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Strategic Management Society, a non-profit group that promotes ethical and strategic business stewardship. In 2012, Gosson was awarded the Grand Cross of the Order of Isabella the Catholic, an honorific designation to civilians in recognition of services that benefit Spain. In 2013, he was appointed an International Fellow of the Royal Academy of Engineering. In 2017, Lebanon's National Post Office, Lebon Post, unveiled a collectible stamp honoring Carlos Gosson. Chapter 6, Publications Renaissance Tokyo, ed. Diamond Shah, 2001. Shift, Inside Nissan's Historic Revival New York, ed. Crown Publishing Group, 
2005. Le Temps de la Verité, Paris, ed. Grasset, 2020. Ensemble, Toujours, Paris, Les Editions de l'Observatoire, 2021. Chapter 7, General Sources. Gosson, Carlos. Shift, Inside Nissan's Historic Revival. Crown Publishing Group, 2007.